So, most pitches that get rejected on the tank are just straight up bad ideas. But every once in a while, they'll reject a genius idea. And that business goes on to be very successful. And by very successful, we're talking about 8, 9, or 10 figures. So in this video, we're going to go through the rejected Shark Tank pitches that made billions. How did these pitches go and where are they today? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Lena Phoenix, and I am the owner of Zero Shoes. And I'm Steven Sashen, I'm the CEO. Zero Shoes, brought to the tank on episode 14 of season four. It's a product that's targeting the market for lightweight and minimalist footwear. These shoes are designed to replicate the experience of walking barefoot as much as possible while keeping your feet safe. The company's mission statement is to create and provide its customers with the most natural feeling footwear possible, be it sandals, shoes, or athletics. The company also ensures that its products are sustainable and vegan friendly. Zero Shoes was founded by married couple and longtime business partners Lena Phoenix and Steven Sashen. Lena, having graduated from Naropa University, became president of her self founded mortgage company called Preferred Capital in 1989 before heading off to run another firm named Garuda Management Services Incorporated. A decade later, her husband Steve, on the other hand, graduated from Columbia University before getting into a range of career paths, including being a Tai Chi coach, a stand-up comedian, and a creator of a film and television word processor, Scriptware. He's also a former All-American gymnast who still remains active despite being over 50 years old. After deciding to actively engage in sprinting at age 45, Steven was recommended by a friend to try out barefoot running. As a result, he joined a barefoot running club. and while while he enjoyed the natural benefits, Stephen didn't want to get all those tears and scratches that come with running barefoot. He wanted people to run barefoot anywhere they wanted to, hence the idea of Zero Shoes. Stephen started off by designing and making barefoot footwear for himself and for his running club, using Vibram rubber and colored cords. However, over time, the shoes became popular amongst the members of the club, so Stephen and his wife Lena decided to start Invisible Shoes in 2009. They soon changed the company's name to Zero Shoes and began selling DIY sandal kits and custom sandals through their website. Now believing in their superior product that needed to reach a large market, they would come onto Shark Tank. We're looking for $400,000 in exchange for 8% equity in our company. The couple walked into that tank introducing themselves and then immediately announcing they were looking for $400,000 for 8% equity. The couple continued their pitch by explaining the studies and perks of their product before going on to say the range of their zero shoot is Designs. The footwear would have a minimal performance model and a more fashion forward model. Now Robert gets on stage and tries out a pair, as he's the only runner amongst the sharks here. And as he puts them on, Lena explains that Zero Shoes could be purchased as either custom made or as a DIY kit that allows customers to cut the rubber down to their foot size. Why don't you come up if you want to, join us and you can actually experience it. Because feeling Zero Shoes is one yeah, thing, but wearing them, that's a whole different story. That well, I'm the only runner up here. Robert then walked across the three surfaces there grass, dirt, and gravel, and he seemed to be impressed with it. According to him, the shoe had almost no weight, and walking on all those surfaces felt great. However, Damon didn't seem impressed. He questioned the $5 million valuation for that product, as it's just made out of rubber and string, to which the couple say that their financial numbers back up their valuation. According to Lena, in the two and a half years since the company was founded, they had sold $650,000 worth of products solely through their website and with no advertisement. They also said in the last two months it sold $130,000 and was on track for $1.2 million in sales and $200,000 in profits for the year. And that's not all. Mark goes and asks about production, to which Lena tells him that they're selling 4mm DIY kits costing at $3.11, but is sold for $24.95 on the website and $12.97 for wholesale. Steve, I promise you that I can have these on the boat in about 30 days. Oh, I would challenge you for that one. You want to challenge me? After a couple more questions, Damon and Kevin seemed to get pissed by the fact that Zero Shoes were called high-tech, despite being just rubber and string. The two sharks don't agree with the hefty valuation of the compass, with Damon saying that he could produce copies of their products in just a month. Eventually, Damon John is the first to go out. Surprisingly, after some back and forth, Kevin makes the first offer, according to him just for the heck of it. 400000 for 50%. Steven thanks him but says that he won't take that offer right away, which surprises 
is his mark. While Kevin remained adamant that the couple's valuation for zero shoes was too high, Barbara also went out, stating a couple of potential liabilities with the shoe's design and also her personal lack of interest for the product. Next, Robert Herjavec also goes out, admitting that he loved the product but couldn't work with their valuation. Things get a bit wild between the two entrepreneurs and the two sharks left. Kevin and Mark maintain that the offer is good, while Stephen refuses to settle. He announced the max equity they were willing to give for $400,000 was 10%. Eventually, Mark's out, and soon after, Kevin follows, leaving the couple to walk out of that tank without a deal. The pair vowed to prove the sharks wrong for not investing in them. And to put it simply, they did it. In the week after that episode, Zero Shoes recorded sales that equaled 20% of the entire previous year, and they were only getting started. They ran a crowdfunding campaign in 2017, raising a mind-blowing $1 million, before selling $12.5 million in equity to TZP Group three years later. Partnering with TZP also helped Steven and Lena make Zero Shoes more global. And in August 2021, Zero Shoes became the official sponsor of the USA Archery and Synchronized Swimming Teams during the Tokyo Summer Olympics. The shoes are available on the company's website and Amazon, where it has over 50,000 plus five-star reviews. But the company's most recent annual review in 2021, Zero Shoes' net revenue was $33.6 million. And today, the company's estimated it to be worth over 20 million, a number that's only getting higher and higher as the years go by. Looks like the Sharks didn't know what the hell they were talking about and missed on a massive opportunity. What about this next one? Rhode Island native Marco Ramley appeared on the tank with a pitch for his product. Hello Sharks, my name is Marco Ramley. My company is Bedjet. Bedjet, which he tagged as the world's first ultra rapid and affordable cooling, heating, and climate control system just for your beds at home. This device is placed underneath a bed. The nozzle is hooked up to the covers and the device is used to distribute the desired temperature throughout the bed, regulated by that smartphone app. This product gives a luxurious hot towel out of the dryer feel and in just three minutes can also be programmed to wake customers up in the morning with a blast of cold air. As you may be wondering, this is a very unconventional product. So what was the thought process? It was more of a personal issue than anything. Mark just happens to be a NASA engineer that works the climate control on the suits. For a period of time, his mother was bedridden after surgery and was residing at their Connecticut home. However, the home was a bit drafty, making it hard to keep her comfortable using regular things like heating pads and electric blankets. So using his experience with NASA, he spent over a year creating a device that could ease his mother's hospital condition. To fund this project, he mortgaged his house and emptied his entire retirement savings. When that proved insufficient, he launched a Kickstarter in December 2013 and was able to raise 58000 which was about 20,000 more than his goal. Hoping to get even more money for larger scale production, Mark decided to come onto the tank, and it ended up being one of the most chaotic pitches in the show's history. Mark Ramley enters the tank and announces that he's seeking an investment of 250,000 for 10% of his company, Bedjet. Can we try it? Yes. Mark, how much noise does it make? As soon as he introduces that product, Mark wants to try it out, so he and Lori step up very jokingly. Now Robert wants to know if it's a waterbed, to which Mark explains that the bed jet actually injects air into the mattress. Mark goes on with the pitch saying that it has dual zone capability, allowing you to control the climate on both sides of the bed to your preference. When Barbara asks about saving energy, Mark tells her that the bed jet actually has a variable automatic shutoff timer for both cooling and heating. So far the pitch has gone quite well, but when Kevin and Cuba and begin digging into the business aspect of Bedjet. Things get a bit blurry. The two sharks ask about the sales of this product, to which Mark says that despite having sold about 60,000 units in a Kickstarter market test, Bedjet is only going into full-scale production in six weeks. So, there are no sales. Kevin and Mark Cuban are obviously not impressed. So next, Cuban asks him about the production cost for each unit, and Mark tells him that it'll be around $98, with the retail price being $499. That means Means that Bedjet would cost more than a regular mattress, and Mark seems to have lost all of the sharks at this point. Six oh, weeks. Oh, there are no sales. 
The next couple of minutes, you can see Aramli trying to keep the sharks interested, but he's not really successful. Things are getting pretty messy, with Lori annoyingly exiting the deal because Aramli repeatedly ignored her question. Mark Cuban also went out, because he didn't get the answers to his questions about the technology of the product. Next up is Barbara, and then Kevin, who had already seemed pessimistic from the beginning of the pitch. Finally, Robert Herjavec also goes out, stating that he likes the machine and doesn't mind the pricing, but wouldn't be investing because Mark failed to give realistic answers on developing the product. I if think it was she's, important, she's a good point. so I feel like that's not the right partner for me. A Ramley gives one last shot by naming the retailers he's partnered up with, but it's not good enough and he walks out without any investment. Surprisingly enough though, that unsuccessful pitch, followed by Kevin badmouthing Bedjet, seemed to push the business forward in very little time. The day after that episode aired, Bedjet closed a deal with Mattress Firm to sell the product on its website, and by the end of 2015, the company had made over $1 million in profits. Mark would take down his price to $299 in 2016, and ended the year with triple the previous year's profits. Since then, Bedjet has progressed to its third generation and has produced a number of other accessories, including aromatherapy kits and adjustable bed frame options, which are all available on Amazon. 2020 saw the company's record with 100,000 units sold, and the company now has a net worth of $30 million. We should also add that Mark Ramley has even bigger plans for his company and doesn't hesitate to rub the Sharks' losses in their face every chance he gets in interviews. Two unsuccessful pitches, two successful businesses. How about this last one? My name is Michael Elliott, and my business is Hammer and Nails. The founder of Hammer and Nails, Michael Elliott, had a difficult background, being homeless in Philadelphia by age 20, having no formal education, and with no family. However, he was determined to make a better life for himself, and dabbled unsuccessfully in rapping, putting on hip-hop concerts, and making magazines before launching a TV show. From turning $250 into $6,000, and paying for airtime to keep the Crush Rap TV show on Channel 57 for 13 weeks, weeks. Michael got a sponsorship with Coca-Cola and it was up and away. He began working for a big-time magazine like Source and started writing movie scripts that accumulated into $118 million in the box offices by the time of his Shark Tank appearance. But now for his appearance, he was pitching something completely different from what he was used to. Michael Elliott had founded a nail salon for men called Hammer and Nails. He launched the first one in LA back in November 2013 and decided to appear on the tank six months later. As you'd expect, he wasn't looking for money here, but more for a shark to help him make that franchise a national brand. I'm seeking $200,000 in exchange for 20% equity in my company. To start his pitch, he explained the dilemma of men feeling out of place patronizing regular manicure and pedicure salons because the services are generally designed to appeal to women. He continued to explain that his business would allow a more masculine environment, but with the perks of a personal 32-inch screen and a comfortable oversized leather chair. After a very persuasive and charismatic pitch, Michael invites Robert to sample the trademark hammer and nails chair with a manicurist on the stage. Lori's asking for the inspiration behind his pitch, and he explains that he was in that kind of situation, just feeling out of place in nail salons. He then conducted a survey of his male friends, and found out that many of them had never had a pedicure or a manicure, because they wanted to avoid that out of place feeling. I opened Hammer Nails seven months ago. So far, we've generated $150,000. We'll do another $100,000 in the next Five months. Michael continues his pitch, saying that his first salon had achieved a turnover of $150,000 in seven months and was projected to make $250,000 at the end of the first year. He also says that he charges anywhere between $23 and $125. So now Damon comes in with a question asking about other services outside of nail treatment, and Michael says that there aren't any other services. He explained that he was trying to keep his business different from the feminine beauty salon setup. Michael fills in the sharks on his future plans for the company, claiming that he wants Hammer and Nails to become like the Starbucks of nails for guys. What looked to be a very successful and intriguing pitch suddenly lost all its glamour when Kevin O'Leary talks about profitability. When Michael can't give the proper response, Mark Cuban joins Kevin in, weighing in on the entrepreneur's flawed business strategy of putting the cart before the horse. For the first time in the whole pitch, Michael was flustered and can't come up with a response for Cuban 
Cuban's drilling, leading to Mark Cuban dropping out. Lori would follow soon after, doubting that the business would make her any money. I think it's a great idea. Why aren't there more of these salons out there for guys? Robert seemed a bit more receptive to investing in his company, but based on the fact that he felt Michael could make the franchise work without any investment from the Sharks, he also stepped out. For Kevin here, though, it's always about the numbers. And since Michael couldn't back up his numbers, Kevin was also out. Now we have Damon John, who looks like he's pretty interested as he is a well-groomed man himself, revealing that he actually patronized a similar business in New York. However, the competing business had other complimentary services, like tailoring in a bar. Soon Michael had pointed out that he was more focused on building a franchise than offering such extra services, so Damon also drops out. Michael Elliott walks out of this tank without a deal, but given his proven record of defying the odds, it's probably not a surprise to anyone that he made Hammer and Nails work. What might be surprising, though, is how much he was able to do so. For this business, the Shark Tank effect not only improved the sales, but it also brought in two angel investors who offered Michael the 200000 he was looking for. His company went on to expand their services soon after, just like Damon suggested, by adding straight razor shaves and haircuts. By 2018, Michael had brought in some of the biggest names in men's beauty, like John Choi and Aaron Mayers, with the two serving as CEO and president, respectively. Fast forward to 2021, and they've launched a total of 13 franchise locations, which has now increased to 41. Hammer & Nails now offers membership, all with increased complimentary services, including massages and an invite-only club. The business is now worth over $30 million. And if you know anything about Michael Elliott, you know he's not slowing down anytime soon.